from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I got it. I got it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Attention all gold diggers. I want to talk to you. Now, this is not a bash gold diggers hour because I don't have a problem with people being gold diggers as long as they're honest about it. You know, be honest about what you are. If you want guys to spend money on you to pamper you, if you want guys to pay your bills, you want guys to buy you condos or take you on trips, you know, as long as you're up front with me and tell me that's who you are, I got no problem with that. Just like I have no problem with prostitution. I got no problem with people who... Uh, engage in other types of vice. I got no problem with it. None. Okay, so if you are a gold digger, listen up, please. I was curious. I had asked this question on the air recently and um, promised to do this as a separate subject. I was wondering um, how the economic downturn is affecting gold diggers. I have to imagine if you are uh, an avowed gold digger, Avowed, look it up. If you're an avowed gold digger, I have to imagine that uh, even the guys who spend money on chicks like you are probably cutting back. If you read the book The Millionaire Next Door, you know that uh, even millionaires, they like to uh, live sensibly and they like to save a buck when they can. And I know that even rich people, believe this or not, because I am a rich person, even rich people are tightening the screws. You know, they are spending less and battening down the hatches and becoming more fiscally responsible at home. And I have to imagine that's affecting gold diggers. I have to imagine that the women who expect to be taken to dinner are being taken to dinner less. I have to expect that the gold digging ladies out there who expect uh, men to be taking them on expensive vacations or expensive trips of some kind haven't been invited on as many trips. I have to imagine that the girls who are gold diggers out there are expecting their condos to be paid for, their rent to be paid for. And I have to imagine there's some uh, guys out there who are sugar daddies who are just saying, you know what, I'm cutting back, not paying your rent. I'm not paying for your trip. I'm not buying you a condo. I'm not buying you a car. I have to imagine there are guys out there with money who are just saying, you know what? Uh, It's great having you around, but uh, I'm cutting back. I'm cutting back. And that's why I wanted to talk this era only to gold diggers. I mean, admitted gold diggers. If you're an admitted gold digger, if you are going to be up front with me, again, I'm not going to beat you up here because uh, I want the information. So I have no need to uh, make fun of you or give you a hard time. Again, I have no problem with people being gold diggers as long as they're honest about it. Just be up front. If you're one of those people, call me right now at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Now, who knows? Maybe your sugar daddy is continuing to lavish you with money and lavish you with uh, all kinds of luxury items. The jewelry hasn't stopped. The cars every uh, year or two haven't stopped. The trips haven't stopped. The little Paris Hilton type dogs and their maintenance haven't stopped. The Manny Petties haven't stopped. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. The, if, if maybe you're the kind of gold digger. If the, the sex is so great and you look so good. He could never cut back. He'd have to cut back in some other area of his life. Maybe his wife, for example. Okay. But if you're a gold digger and you've got a sugar daddy or more than one and you have found these guys, maybe, uh, by the way, here's another possibility that you are a gold digger and the guy who's uh, supposed to be spending on uh, money on you is trying to cut back, but you got more than one guy spending money on you. There are many of you out there, and uh, by the way, you're on those websites like sugardaddy.com and millionairesclub123.com, what have you. There's many of you out there right now who have several sugar daddies, several guys who are paying the freight. Maybe they're all married, or they all have girlfriends, or they all live in some other state, or they all are in different businesses. They're all uh, too busy to spend all of their time with you, and uh, perhaps you've found uh, productive ways to use the rest of your time. 
So this hour, I'm going to talk only to gold diggers. If you are a gold digger, uh, call me here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And tell me if any of the men in your life have tried to cut back, if they've tried to tell you the economy is bad, dear, and I have to cut back. If, if you have heard this from somebody, maybe you dumped the guy, by the way. Have you dumped the guy? Because he said, that's it, I'm not paying anymore? You know, maybe you date a guy who's like, not not Ed McMahon himself, maybe you date a guy who's like Ed McMahon, a guy who once had $200 million, now he's living under a freeway overpass. He finally had to say, I can't do it anymore. I can't. And maybe you had to dump him. All right. If you are a gold digger, if you are that type, and you have found that there are guys who have been hurt by the economy and they cannot lavish you with the same attention and luxury that you are used to, if you are finding that the guys you have been having these sugar daddy, gold digger type relationships with have had to cut back, I'd like to hear about it. Also, if you are uh, a gold digger and, uh, you know, you're, uh, uh, your package is so desirable that even in these tough economic times that your man or your man uh, have not cut back, I'd like to hear about that as well right now. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 The Tom Likas Show The Tom Likas Show 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number Now come on, come clean if you're a gold digger It's okay I'm happy that you're a gold digger. Just tell me you are. And tell me if this economic downturn is affecting your ability to be a gold digger. It's 1-800-5800-866. That's our telephone number on the Tom Likas Show. Let's say hello to JoJo on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, JoJo. <laughs> I'm so nervous talking to you. I'm so excited and I'm so nervous. I love that. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right. Well, I can address this on several levels, and uh, you just throw it out there, and I'll tell you my experience because I've got them all. <laughs> uh, tell me all about it. Uh, all righty. All right. Well, the cheap one. Okay, the cheap one. I'll have to say. Came in from out of town, and while I was visiting that town, the red carpet was out. It was wonderful. Everything was great. And that person came to California for a visit, and we go out, and the first place he wants to go to is some dive bar. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, that was the first part. So we walk in, and, and he's going, this place is great. It's got a lot of history. And I am just so uncomfortable. At, at some point, he looks over, he goes, you're very uncomfortable, aren't you? And I said, yeah, I am. My hands are sticking to the bar, you know. And he says, all right, all right, no problem, no problem. I said, let me take you where I roll, okay? And in my head, I'm thinking, this cannot be the same person that I was with in this other city. So I take this person to a beautiful rooftop bar overlooking the ocean in Laguna, and I'm going, these are my peeps, and this is how I roll. No problem. Loves the view. Everything's cool. Gets the bill for $40 and actually complained. Really? That's when I knew it was over. It was done. I don't know what was going on in the other city. I don't know who he knew or how it happened, but after somebody complains about a $40 bill for Two beers a piece. I I just looked at me. He just said forty dollars, and I I looked at him. I said, uh, "What do you pay where you're from?" And he said three fifty. And I said, "Well, that explains it, you know." And and from that moment, I was like, "You know what? Mm, this is just not working out." You know, my tummy really hurts. I gotta go home. <laughs> really? Oh my god! Come on, forty bucks. <laughs> he must be a listener. Well, no, I don't mind the listener time. I love the listeners. Let me tell you, I love that straight up. And I have been criticized by my female friends for being too straight up with men. I mean, if I'm not going to sleep with you, I'll tell you right out. It's not going to happen. Save your money, save your breath, and save our time. But, uh, <laughs> honestly, Tom, <laughs> and, and I, honestly, and I've had many men come back after telling them that, and they were happy that I told them. But, uh, you know, I love the like mindset, and unfortunately... Um, for maybe some of the men in my world, it's a good or a bad thing. You know, I'm not quite sure which. <laughs> oh, boy. 
So, um, do you have more than one man uh, servicing you financially? Um, I would like to say yes in more ways than one, but no. The answer is no. To be honest, I wish I wish my men were a little more generous, but they are. I mean, they take me to some amazing places, and and I've had some amazing experiences. But uh, so, anyway, you're, are you talking about uh, countries or restaurants? Uh, well, both. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, I would like to tell you that, yeah, this freaking economy has me learning how to cook. And I have to tell you, Tom, I can't cook to save my life. Really? I really can't cook. My grandson will not eat my food. My children don't <laughs> like my food. They like my food. <laughs> and I'm having to learn how to cook, Tom, and it blows. Oh, my God. You So you've never cooked? Well, if I've cooked, it hasn't been very well. And when I do, it's just really not worth the effort. You know, time value money. Now, how, how could, you're 38 years old and a grandmother? I'm really not talking about it. It wasn't my choice, and personally, it would not have been my same decision, but... Well, being a mother at 19 or whatever was a decision, right? What's that? When when did you become a mother? I didn't become a mother until 21. <laughs> All right, so then your daughter got pregnant at 17, 16, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And, uh... Were either of you married? Oh, man. Come to black, dude. We were talking about gold digging. No, 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 no. I'm just curious. I'm, 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 I'm not beating you up this time. I told you I would not beat you up. Oh, I'm just curious. Where you're coming from. I know where you're coming from. We did, we did the show where he asked for the youngest grandmother listening to call in. Well, what can I tell you? By the way, you would not have won. Oh, oh God. That's even worse. Nope. We, oh. got, we got to 29 years old. Oh, uh. Wow. Well, that's, that's scary. Let me just say, like I said, it's it's not my issue, and thankfully my daughter is a much better mother than I ever was. But um, anyway, bottom line, all I can tell you is this freaking economy is hurting my bottom line and my enjoyment factor. Wow. <laughs> my factor has gone down at least twenty five percent. And and uh, being a grandmother at thirty eight, are you still hot? Uh, you know what, Tom? I am actually. I I gotta tell you, I am. Uh, I've been complimented many, many times when I go out. And, um, you know, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. When <laughs> you asked, I'm just really? saying. <laughs> Is that so? Yeah. I'm actually very proud of myself. I work out twice a day. But <laughs> this doesn't come easy. Now and I'm you, not going down without a fight. Now, do you work also? Yes, I do. What do you do? <laughs> I sell adult toys. You <laughs> ask. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> you asked, Tom. What can I say? Well, I uh, just, you know, not that maybe that explains your daughter having a baby. I don't know. Hey, we're not going there, okay? <laughs> ah, we've been there and back already. <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me, Tom. You're killing me. Oh my God! So I mean, here you are. You're you're a 38 year old grandmother and a gold digger. Hey, you asked. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going. just, I just, I'm fascinated by the story. Uh, you know what, Tom? Honestly. I was not this brazen, and if I had known then what I know now, I should have had five homes already. I have made three men rich and lost everything, okay? You made, wait, you you said you made three men rich? How'd you do that? I did. I did. I made three men rich, and I was the nice girl. Were they your pimp? I mean, who, who, what do you mean you made three men rich? You know what? I built their businesses. I I sold my homes. I paid their taxes. I ran their their businesses without. Really? Yeah, Tom, you know what? What I want to know is where does the nice girl who didn't take advantage of everybody go? Because, honestly, I was the good one, and I am getting my ass kicked. Oh my. <laughs> so are you trying to make up for lost time by being a gold digger now? Well, I don't want to. I, I hate that term. I know. I would like to say, <laughs> I would like to say free agent with, uh, with a lot of benefits. <laughs> well, well, I'm a free agent, but nobody's paying me. Well, you know, that would make you a whore, wouldn't it, Tom? <laughs> well, I am. I'm a radio whore. I'm a talk radio whore. As I always say, that's why they hang a red light outside the studio. Yeah, well, I'm an attention whore. I'll, I'll own up to it. I can't help it. I love it. And, You're... you know, I know my day's coming. I know my time is limited. I know the clock is ticking. And there will come a day when somebody goes, Grandma, go home. Okay. But until then, until that moment, and as long as I can go and have a good time and still look young, I'm going for it. You could be a great-grandmother by 50. Hey, 
going to go there, okay? It's scary enough. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there the first time. I'm not in any hurry to get there any further down the road, okay? <laughs> um, you're killing me. <laughs> you're killing me, Larry. All right. <laughs> All right, JoJo. Thanks for the fun. And by the way, I love your show. Love all the stuff you do. And by by the way, keep it keep it going because I, I tell my son, my friends, and even my girlfriends, it's like if you don't get smart and you don't listen, I don't know what you think you're offering. How old is you your son? Oh, get Tom. We're not going. There. Wait, no, no, no. I gotta. Wait. No, Tom. How stop. old is your son? I gotta know. Stop. How old is he? I'm not answering. And no, he's not younger than my or older than my daughter. <laughs> You're killing me. You're killing me. I'm going now, Tom. I'm going. All right, Tommy. <laughs> tell him to buy some condoms, will you? I hope to. I hope to. Tell him. I buy him the box myself and go listen to Tom. That's Just, good. Good. Yeah, I'm all about that. I would have paid for him to have been six. Look at that. Wow. I'm all about that, man. Uh, Get it undone later. Get uh, it undone they, later. That, yeah, that's exactly right. Or not. Yeah, exactly. And don't <laughs> tell him either. <laughs> okay, Tom, stop. You're going to get me on a roll. All right, JoJo. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Thanks for calling in. Wow. 38-year-old grandmother who's a gold digger. Wow. That, that blows me away. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. A lot of women are just afraid to say they're gold diggers. Come on. You know you have a sugar daddy. You know you're a gold digger. You know you are. You know, if a guy is paying your rent... You're a gold digger. If a guy has bought you a condominium, you're a gold digger. If a man has taken you on a trip out of the country, sorry, <laughs> you're a gold digger. If a man has given you a check or worse, cash, <laughs> you're a gold digger. <laughs> Come on, ladies, you know who you are. Please. Seriously speaking, okay? I mean, come on. You know, if a man has bought you expensive pets and then pays to help you maintain them, you're a gold digger. If a man buys you clothes or if you have a copy of a guy's credit card, like you're the additional card holder on his platinum card or his black card, you're a gold digger. That's right. Now, Dean, it's not enough to not pay for her own cell. Dean says if you don't pay for your own cell phone, you're a gold digger. No, that's not enough because then he gets the bill and he sees who else you're talking to. No, no. Our, our true gold digger not only has him paying for the cell phone, but she the bill comes to her house and she uses his cash to pay the bill so he can't see what numbers are on the bill. Seriously. Okay. So many of you I know don't like to define yourselves as gold diggers, but come on, ladies, you are. And that's okay this hour, because as much as I tell guys how to avoid gold diggers, this hour is not to attack gold diggers. The idea of this hour is to get you to call in and tell us if the economic hard times we're facing right now are affecting gold digging. I'm really curious about this. Did a guy go to Costco and get you a diamond ring, for example? I mean, come on. How are those diamond rings at Costco? I, I don't buy diamond rings. I'm not in that business. But uh, anybody bought one? You know, like right when you come in the door, you get past the beach towels and the 40 pounds of cashews. Right? You come in and they've got that glass cabinet and it's got like jewelry in there. Seriously. They've got all the diamonds in there. How, how is that? You, you, did your man buy you a, a jewelry at Costco? Did it cause you a fight? Did you cause you to tell him to get lost? Did you throw the jewelry back at him? Come on. If you're a gold digger, I want to find out if the economic uh, downturn has affected your ability to be a gold digger. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Elizabeth on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. Gosh, it's been a while since I've talked to you. I've talked to you about four years ago. And um, how'd, that work, how'd, that, I, how'd that work out for you? I don't know if you remember this. It was about teenage moms. Were you one of them? I was one of them. And I, I, was, uh, I was 
five months pregnant with my fourth child. Oh, really? And I was just about to get married to my husband. And he told me, don't do it. And what the hell am I doing? And, well, I got married. And I had the baby, my fourth child. And I'm currently divorced. (laughs) What did I tell you? And what did, I am what now, did I tell you? Let me just say though, I mean, I I've made a complete U turn. I have a job. I've been doing this for uh, ever since I spoke to you. Since my baby was four months old, I went out and got a pretty much a job, and I just bought a pretty house. Pretty much a job. How can you afford a house with five kids? Well, I'm a public bus driver. You're a public bus driver. Yes. Meaning you work for one of the governmental agencies that that run buses. Yes. Okay. And and that's is that paying six figures? How do you, how do you support five kids in Southern California? I have four. And, four kids. Um, okay. You know, on, on a bus driver's salary, how do you do that? I just do it. You make it work. You make it work. You make it well. You have no choice but to make it work. Right. How's it going? But I also do it by being a gold. You do it by being a gold digger? <laughs> I have to. Well, see, there you go. That's what I was getting at. Okay, you're a gold digger. I am. I am now currently, um, I don't know, I'm in a relationship with a woman. A woman? Yes. I and see. And she pays, she, she pays a lot of my bills. Now, were you always a lesbian? Obviously not, because you have four children. Right. Um, no, always curious, but never never acted on it. And are you in this relationship because you're in love or because you're in love with money? No, because of the money, yeah. You're in it. So, in other words, are you not a lesbian? Are you you're just bisexual? Are you? Would you rather be with a man? I still, I still date men, but as far as... <laughs> Sounds like, but that there's a great story, and of course, thanks to the cell phone, we lost it. The 25 year old mother of four, who is now in a lesbian relationship to, uh, because she's a gold digger and she wants money to help <laughs> pay for the four kids, and she's a bus driver. How did that guy? You know, I she was unpeeling like an onion. I could have gone on and on with that. Jesus Christ! Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-86. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. How is the lousy economy affecting gold diggers? It's Tiffany on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Good. Well, I was calling to let you know that I'm not a gold digger. I'm a gold miner. I, well, I your did, phone, I your phone cut out at the uh, the exact moment we needed here. You're not a gold digger. What are you? A gold miner. I mine these coals. I get it, baby. I get that money. Really? Yes, sir. How much do you get? Huh? How much do you get? Uh, I get six figures. Six figures, and how many guys do you have to nail in order to uh, get six figures? Well, at first, at first I had four prospects, right? And then I went ahead and went. And it said I saw how the economy was going. I said I got to lock in on this one that's getting a big money. So I went ahead and locked in on him. I married him. You now married I'm a, him. I'm a 27 year old grandma. <laughs> You're 27 year old grandma? Yeah, I don't have any kids of my own, but he got a bunch of kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, really? Yeah, really. Now, tell me about him. What does he look like? What's he like? Uh, he's just a regular dude that's from the South, and uh, he just he works for a job that pays well. And all right. He, he's kind of fat, a little bit fat, but he's all right. That's all right with you. Yeah. And uh, how much money does he have, or how much does he make? Well, he makes six, he makes six figures, and... Uh, he does well. Let me tell you, like, I started out in the Geo Metro. Now I'm rolling in the Dodge Charger. Open Dodge Charger? Do you, have, do you have the Hemi engine? And yeah, with the Hemi and everything, baby. Really? Money. Wait, yeah. you, when are you going to give me a ride, darling? Yeah. 
I'll come pick you up and take you to the lab factory, baby. Take you to a college. Oh, look at you. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Now, now, now that you have married this guy, does that slow you down and you're still looking for more uh, prospects? Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to just work this mine right here till it dry out, man. You know, <laughs> that's what it got to do. So you're just going to tap him out and then move on to the next victim? Yeah, I'm hot. Now, now, does he give you, like, uh, are you, like, the additional card holder on his American Express, or uh, do, do you have his ATM or any of that stuff? All of that. Really? All of that. And you got his Social Security number and all his PIN codes and everything? Yeah, I did a background check before I got with him. Had to get the credit for it first, make sure it's cool. Really? Really? Uh, I can't believe it. That's, that's amazing. Very methodical. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you treat this like a business. Oh, yeah. This is, this is like a house. My grandma always taught me that, you know, your cuckoo is a house. And you don't let everybody in your house except people that can afford to party with the house. You know, they can help take care of the house. Really? Yeah. If he Do can you... maintain it, I can get with you. Hopefully you clean the house now and then. Oh, yeah. No, always clean the house, open the windows. You don't want nobody thinking you could get fish up in there or nothing like that. <laughs> take care of that house. <laughs> 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 now, some of the ladies who've called in have drapes on those windows. Some of those women have abandoned houses. They have <laughs> horrible cobwebs and everything. It's just a thing. <laughs> you let somebody come in there for a little bit. Some of them have uh, high ceilings. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. They got mini mansions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grandma. I ain't dropped no kids. I got a studio up in here. <laughs> Now, do you have to do grandma things? you have to hang out with his kids? Um, yeah, I hang out with his kids. And, uh, you know, I, they don't call me grandma. They call me Miss Tiffany. <laughs> Miss Tiffany. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very good. So you're going to stay locked down to him until you tap him out. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to fall out of love with him and move on to the next victim. Oh, no, I'll, I'll always love him. I'll always love him. But, you know, I have to do what's best for me. Even if you didn't always love him, darling, just just saying it, you know? How <laughs> sweet is that? You I'll know, honey, always... honey, I know you're out of money, but remember, I'll always love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a pleasure. Uh, so let us know. Uh, maybe we can hook you up with the next victim uh, after you tap this guy out. Oh, well, by then I should be famous, so I'll be working on somebody big. <laughs> an usher or somebody. I'll be that woman in the background. You are out of control. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. <laughs> 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's a... Are they all named Tiffany on the Tom Like is Show? Hello. Tiffany. <laughs> Hey, Tom. Hey, Tiffany. Um, I don't know. You think of a hooker, a slut, a gold digger, Tiffany comes up. We're all going to use it. Strippers? Yeah. Um, I am not a stripper. I have a lot of money that I make on my own. I am also a gold digger. It goes both ways. You're a gold digger. So how do you find your prey? Um, You know what? I look at what they're wearing. I look at what they drive. There's a certain attitude. They might have a belt on that's a thousand dollars and a uh, Goodwill shirt on. I know they have one. Really? I can spot them. So now, uh, when you say you're a gold digger, do you have one particular victim you hit upon, or do you have others? Currently, right, now, I have two. You have two, and do they know about each other or no? Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 Not at all. No. I'm a great con artist. And what you say on the radio is true, and I don't really? like your sh- I don't like your show, but I listen to you because I hate you so much. So you're right. Really? Now, yeah. so are you a big fan of like Bonnie Lee Bakley? No, AM talk radio. <laughs> no, no, Bonnie Lee Bakley is not a radio personality. Bonnie Lee Bakley was Robert Blake's wife. Oh God! You know what? Uh, Duh, that makes me look stupid. Uh, no, I'm not a fan. <laughs> well, she had nothing to be a fan of anymore. She she died. Somebody killed her. I know that. I know that. But, but uh, you know, she certainly seemed to be a gold digger. Hell yeah. Were you a fan of her work? Uh, no, she's dead. You, you know, she was living in Robert Blake's guest house and sending naked pictures of herself to other men. <laughs> he 
killed her. She did something wrong. No, no, no. He was he was acquitted. Ah, uh, well, she was murdered. She did something wrong. I, I'm not a fan. But oh, you're not a fan of her being murdered. But what about the fact that she was like married to him, moved onto the property, got her own you know room in the guest house, and then proceeded to send naked pictures of herself to other guys. Okay, she she did a good job. I'll give her that. I'm better. You're you're better than that as being a gold digger. Tell us how. Oh my goodness. Um. Okay, Tom. I'll be honest. I, I'm not a by society standards a great looking woman. I'm really not. Uh huh. I have the ability to know what people need to hear, and I con people that way. So you see yourself as a con artist, like Bonnie Lee Baker. Yes. Well, yeah. Only better. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, tell us about your last victim. Okay, my two victims right now. Uh, my last victim. I went to Europe, Madrid. I went to the Bahamas within this past year on that person's dime. I um, was served luxury. Um, anything you could think of, I got. Any. He's still doing it to this day with the economy the way it is. We do talk about the economy, but I also have my own money. I could live on my own and, and use my own money. I don't want to. Somebody else's money is free. Where did you get money from? Other guys? I have a career, and I'm a professional woman. I won't tell you what because it will make me look gross. Um, no, no, no. I mean, you're anonymous. You might as well tell. I know that's not even your real name, Tiffany, so why don't you just oh, tell us? It's not. Okay, I am a, I'm a therapist. I'm a shrink. You're a shrink. I'm a shrink. What? Yes. You're a gold digging shrink. <laughs> so you've got. Let me understand this. You've got clients, patients. What do you call them? I call them clients. Clients, right? Okay. So, you, so you actually you go in there and you listen to people's problems all day, and then when you're not there, uh, you're busy being a gold digger. Yes, I charge a lot an hour. I'm good at what I do, and then I'm a gold digger, yes. And you, let me understand this, you use your psychiatric abilities to figure out what people uh, want to hear, and then you uh, say whatever they want to hear, and then you take their money. Yes. Which isn't that different from being a shrink. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. You're right. <laughs> I just gave I just gave therapists a bad name. But Look oh well. at this, unbelievable! <laughs> that's a, that's an amazing story. That's what it is, man. Wow! And uh, when these guys are tapped out, will you move on to new victims? How do you do that? Sorry, I'm Oh, your phone is cropping out there, Tiffany. Yeah. What you say? Should I call you Doctor Tiffany? Sure, I am a doctor. Yeah. And uh, seriously, now, now the economic downturn, has this affected your gold digging? Okay, it is not affecting my gold digging. It is affecting my first income. So there's less people coming to the shrink. Less people coming to the shrink. I have to lower my prices and my 401k. I took a huge loss. Yeah, well, you and everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So that means these suckers are going to have to work extra hard to make Dr. Tiffany happy. You are damn straight. And and do they know what you do for a living? Yes. <laughs> what do they think you do? <laughs> what? What do these guys think you do for a living? Do they know you have a job? They know exactly, yeah. They know well, they what do. I do for a job. And do they know that there is, a, does each know that there's another guy? No. 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 Really? No. Uh-uh. Wow. I live, I live by myself. I'm a great liar. And proud of it. <laughs> Damn, I've worked hard. Now, in your practice, do you ever meet people like you? Great question. No. <laughs> do you see a shrink? Yourself? I know many therapists do see shrinks. Do you? Yes. And do you tell about your double life to the shrink? Yes, yes. And, As a matter of fact, that's where I'm driving home from. Yes. So what does uh, what does she say about that? Oh Jesus! Uh, oh, that's a good question. Oh, geez, she had to violate the zero tolerance policy. Yeah. She was doing so well there. What a great! That's the story of the day. Tom.
1-800-5800-TOM. TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's Tom Likas at one 800 800 tom How is the economic downturn affecting you gold diggers out there? 1-800-5800-866. It's Sydney on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing great, Cindy. Okay. Um, I'm calling because I want to know how to be a gold digger. I've always been that woman that has taken care of a man. So I've never been taken care of, and I want to be taken care of. Well, I mean, you usually get an offer. That's how, how it starts. But how? How do I? How do I present myself? I don't know. To well, be offered on. Being, being young and in great shape really helps. I see. Okay. Well, what else? What else? Uh, giving a man sexually whatever he asks for. To do that? That that's what being a gold digger is all about. Well, that's really called prostitution, isn't it? Well, uh, if if you have an ongoing quote unquote relationship with somebody, then technically, I guess one could say it's not prostitution. Ah, I see. So it's just the ongoing. If a guy of- if a guy buys you a condo and pays the maintenance on it. Uh-huh. And then he visits you three nights a week at your condo. It's no longer considered prostitution. It's considered you're his girlfriend or you're his lover or something. Oh. And he's just being generous. I see. I see. So you've never met a rich guy who offered to, to take care of you or pay for anything? Never. Never. Well... I haven't seen you, so I can't judge you. I have no idea. But I would say also that, uh, you know, not in addition to being young and attractive, uh, in shape and all that, um, it helps if you go where the rich people are. Okay, so, okay, you have to be young, which maybe I'm teetering on that. So that means that I have to go after older men. Well, yeah, but even but the thing is that doesn't work because even older men, if they've got money, can afford to go as young as they want. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So, so my window is closed. You know, was- like a container of milk expires on that date, no matter how old the consumer. So, are you saying my milk is expired? Your milk may be past the sell-by date. Oh no! Hey, you may have sour milk. So how do I know? Like, what? what is that? Well, I mean, well, it would help if rich guys were making you offers. Okay, well, there are no guys that are offering. Well, they have- well you may have your answer already. Or years. Was- now, you, it helps to go where rich guys are. I mean, have you ever hung out at a country club, a tennis club, a, a place where rich guys go, golf course? No. Well, hey, you know, rich guys are not coming down to the laundromat. I don't go to the laundromat. Uh, where do you go, darling? To dance. Yeah, damn, but guys don't like dancing, and rich guys do not have to dance to get women. <laughs> what? Rich guys do not have to dance to get women. Okay, well, you know, I don't know you know who you meet. You know, you meet pizza delivery guys at the nightclub who are good-looking guys. Yeah, your age or younger. That uh-huh. that's but but you're not gonna rich guys don't dance. So I have to do what the rich guys do. That's how you meet rich guys. Country club golfing. Go where they go. Okay, go where they go, and then what? And then I, uh, you know, dress a little slutty, not a lot slutty, just a touch slutty. The t- okay. And you have to you have to make the most of your assets. I see. But then the the, the the deal is, dear, that, uh, you know, if that guy uh, wants to take you home, at some point, in, in order to get what he's giving, you're going to have to give him what he wants. Really? But don't of they course. Have to give something before they get it? Well, uh, yeah, uh, they might give you something before they get it, but they're not going to give you a whole stream of stuff before they get it. Uh, just like... Uh, you know, somebody might give you a free gift for ordering Sports Illustrated. You're eventually going to have to read all the issues. 
I see. Okay, so all these women that have been calling you have all had sex with these men before they gave... I, I didn't say all, but the vast majority of them are not only having sex. They are available to have sex with the guy whenever he wants it. Many of these guys might be married or have girlfriends or whatever. So when they call, you are ready. Also, oh. you have to be prepared to not have a date on the following day. So you're ready. You're going to write these down, okay? Okay. Following dates. You're not going to be uh, seeing a man, okay? Okay. Uh, December 24th. December 25th. Dece getting these? December 31st. Okay. January 1st. Febru oh. February 14th. Uh, uh, Memorial Day. Fourth of July. Labor Day. The fourth Thursday in November, uh, also known as Thanksgiving, and uh, your birthday or his birthday. I'll, I'll so never have a date on those days. You will not have a date because you have to be available, yet be prepared that he will uh, disappoint you by being with his wife, other girlfriends, or maybe he's working. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that's not for me then. Gold digging. Well, you've made it this far in life, darling, without being a gold digger. Well, I always thought it was such a, I don't know, an honor to be taken care of. Yes, but darling, they, they, you know, you don't get that for free. There's no, there's no free lunch. Okay. I mean, the ultimate in being a gold digger is sitting by the phone on New Year's Eve in case he calls, knowing that if you're not there to answer the phone, the uh, the well of money might dry up. Knowing also that he's there with his wife and kids, or his girlfriend and their kids, or it doesn't right. And, you, and there you are sitting home watching Ryan Seacrest or whatever on New Year's <laughs> Eve, waiting for the phone to ring. Okay, well you've talked me out of it. I am <laughs> never going to. Be <laughs> you didn't sound like the time. You don't have that killer instinct, Cindy. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tom. All right, darling, thank you. We saved you from a life of crime. Hey, okay, but... <laughs> I love that. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Visit our MySpace. It's myspace.com slash Tom Likas. MySpace.com slash T O M L E Y K I S. Hear our show streaming live at our website. It's blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button and you'll be listening live. The Tom Likas Show.